September 22nd is an exceptionally important date. I know a lot of things happen on a lot of days, but I'm thinking here of September 22nd, 480 BC. And you can see if something really important happens that far back, the implications of it for the present are even more enormous than if something important happened in 1940. What I have in mind here is the Battle of Salamis, at which a cobbled together kind of ragtag, numerically far inferior Greek fleet defeated the mighty Persians. Xerxes' navy filled the seas. And yet, in this pivotal battle, the Greeks outsmarted the Persians, lured them into narrow straits where their numbers told against them and crushed them. And that was half of finishing off the Persian invasion of the Greek mainland. The other half was the Battle of Plataea the next year. In both of these confrontations, it was the apparently chaotic, disorderly behavior of free people questioning their commanders, arguing about strategy, bickering right up to the moment that the starting gun went off, or in this case, the starting arrow, that helped them find a better way. And if you think back to the foundations of our culture in the Greek, Greek habit of free inquiry, and these very famous names, you know, Plato, Aristotle, Socrates, the great dramatists like Aeschylus, raising virtually every important philosophical and social question that we continue to deal with to our own time. All of this happens in a very brief period between the expulsion of the tyrants in Athens around 510 BC and the death of Alexander the Great in about 323 BC. After that, it's over to the Romans and their curious combination of Greek inquiry with Pragma pragmatism, you know, someone said if the Greeks wanted to know the difference from Athens to Rome, they'd take a bearing on the stars, the Romans would order some soldiers to pace it off. But all of this that expands outward and forms what we think of the, as the Western world depends upon beating off Xerxes, the god king, the tyrant, the absolutist, whose citizens, well, citizens is the wrong word, whose subjects had no rights way back in 480. And it's remarkable to think this mood that exists. David Klinghoffer in National Review once said that there's a, a peculiar calm about ancient Greece. And sure, they could get hot under the collar. Yes, they did force Socrates to commit suicide. The mob could get out of hand. There are very bloody battles. But Greek civilization is characterized by a highly unusual separation of emotion from reason in order to consider a question dispassionately. A habit of mind that puts truth ahead of loyalty and as would be said, later Jerusalem met Athens and Rome, and you get a further flowering of Western civilization that then leads through medieval Europe to the creation of things like parliaments and to the open society that we enjoy. So when you look at the Battle of Salamis, you have to understand it's not just a victory for free inquiry, it's a victory by free inquiry. Victor Davis Hanson lays enormous stress on this battle in his book Carnage and Culture, including this curious thing for 2,500 years, warfare between West and non-West, the casualty ratio has been about 10 to 1. Western armies fight better because they are composed of free people. And if we'd lost the Battle of Salamis, and I do say we, in 480 BC, none of that would have happened. So it is a part of our heritage worth treasuring, worth celebrating, and above all, worth remembering. Because if we cannot remember it, it's not just that we can't celebrate it, it's that we can't hang on to it and build on it. September 22nd, 480 BC, the Battle of Salamis, a bright light shining on us from the distant past. Thanks for watching. Click here to never miss a Rebel update. Want even more of the Rebel? Well, click here to become a premium member.